Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. As you can guess or as you can see, in this one we are going to be folding boxes which is super important because you probably didn't know how to fold a box and when you don't know something it's kind of nice for somebody to tell you how to do it. So in this tutorial we're going to fold boxes, it's going to involve rigging and that's about it and normally I don't talk about rigging so I think it'll be interesting. Oh by the way uh, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, uh, more about them at the end of the video. So uh, for now here's how you fold a box. I'm gonna delete everything and start off with a plane. Why am I starting off with a plane? Well when we fold a box or any object, you want to think of it as origami in a sense. So we need to start off with the flat version and then uh, fold it. If you think about it, if you were to unfold a box, it almost looks like a T or like a cross or something like this. So I'm going to E to extrude on the X axis. I'm just extruding and typing in two. So it's two units tall. So extrude Y negative two, extrude Y negative two. And now we have our T. I want you to think about this folding inwards, this folding this way, this folding this way, and then we have a double over here. And that is going to be our full uh, box uh, covering every side. Again, uh, we are going to do rigging to animate this. So I'm going to start off with an armature. And uh, the nice thing about this is we know that everything is one or two units off. So I'm going to take my armature, um, move it. Well, I guess we can do it in edit mode. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to move it on the Y axis by one, making sure to select the base, or I guess I want to do it in object mode. Moving it here, and then in edit mode, I'm moving it two units on the Y axis and moving it down one unit on the Z axis. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making sure the base of the armature is aligned to this edge and that it goes all the way over here, although I don't think it matters too much how far it goes. I'm then gonna go to edit mode, shift D to duplicate, G, Y, one, or sorry, negative one, to move it down a unit. And then for this, the uh, tip of it, G, X, three, G, Y, minus two. So I'm just doing the mental math here uh, to get it positioned where I want to. Again, uh, we're just putting it on these uh, folding edges. If you think about, about this as origami, uh, we can then take this and here's a little trick, shift D to duplicate. And then in the uh, orbiting mode, we can go to 3D cursor for the pivot point and then rotate like this uh, to get this for free by 180 degrees. Shift D, RZ, 90. And then uh, finally, uh, for this one, we can extend the armature by hitting E for extrude and then G, Y, uh, minus two. And we've set up our armature. Cool. Um, next thing to do is we need to take our mesh and our armature and link them um, and then we can actually animate the armature. So uh, take the uh, mesh, shift click the armature, control P to parent, and then uh, there's a lot of ways we could do this. We could do it with automatic weights, envelope weights, whatever. Because this is such a simple rig, I'm going to do an empty group. And what this means is every bone is going to correspond to, if we go to the mesh, you can see a bunch of vertex groups. Uh, each one corresponds to a vertex group and we can select which bone, or sorry, which face uh, each bone has influence over. So for example, uh, this bone over here would only have influence over this polygon, etc. And we can set that up. Uh, but first, I want to give these bones names so we can actually uh, use them. Now, I believe we can go into the bone names and say something like right. And then this one could be top. This one could be left. I'm just doing this so I know uh, which vertex group goes where. Well, I guess uh, mm, I guess uh, one thing is the uh, vertex groups are already named these random things. Oh no, they do seem to update. That is a nice feature. I didn't know that was the case. Um, okay, let's keep naming them. So we have left, we have bottom. I'm looking at you, Michael. And uh, double bottom. Still looking at you, Michael. Okay, cool. Um, now to set up our vertex groups. So again, the case right now is that these bones aren't affecting anything. So you can see when I'm animating them, um, nothing happens, right? Because uh, they're not linked to anything. So let me just go back. 
so in the vertex groups, we're going to start off with top. In edit mode, I'm going to select the top face since that corresponds to it. Click assign. For the right one, I'm going to click the right face, click assign, and then I'm just going to keep going down the list. And for the bottom, you can assign, and for the double bottom, you can assign. You don't need to select both, I believe. Uh, what this means now is if we go to pose mode, which you can do with control tab, or you can go over here, right? Um, this should mean that when we rotate it, it's now affecting its corresponding face, right? Um, so what we can do is we can animate this. I'm going to keyframe its, I can't remember if it's location or rotation. I'm just going to do both. And then over 30 frames, I'm going to then animate this. So this is going to fold up by 90 degrees so that it makes the wall of the box. This by negative 90 degrees. This on the x-axis by 90 degrees. So you can see how we're forming our box. Nice thing about uh, the bottom one is it uh, holds both faces, and then we can uh, do kind of a joint thing. So by 90, nope, by negative 90 degrees, and then this one by 90, nope, negative 90 degrees. There we go. Select all of these keyframe location and rotation. And what this is going to look like is a box folding. To make it look a bit more interesting, we could do uh, one of these one of these animation things. So let's see what this looks like. Awesome. And uh, at this point, since the armature you can think of as basically a modifier, right, that's being applied, uh, we could do some cool stuff after this. So like, for example, we could do a subdivision surface. It would look a bit strange, but we could do it. And uh, add more levels of division. <laughs> This is a thing we could do. We could also do a, a merge by distance to uh, connect them, I believe. Uh, let's do wireframe. Whoa, isn't that fun? And as I mentioned before, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. They are generously sponsoring this video. And if you're looking to make a website, you should always start with Squarespace because it is the easiest way to make a website that is beautiful from the get-go. My website, www.cgmatter.com, was made with Squarespace. And I like it because all you have to do is pick a template, move things around, and you don't need to think too much about anything. You don't need to know how to code or anything like this. Three features you might be interested in when you sign up with Squarespace and you make your website with them is one analytics you can see who's going to your website demographic type information two you can embed your social media feeds like twitter directly in your website so you don't need a redirect you can keep everybody in one place and three like i already said you have this automatic image cropping or basically everything is automatically placed when you move around these blocks and stuff like this so if you're looking to build a website go to squarespace use your trial to develop your website and make it look beautiful and when you're ready to to take this thing and launch it and make it live, you can use my link in the description to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring.